A bridge that connects community members in Letcher County to a state highway closes. How first responders are reacting to the news. And FEMA is warning folks who survived the April 2nd storms across Kentucky to be aware of fraud. What storm survivors should be on the lookout for. Temperatures today were in the 70s. A warming trend is in the forecast. We'll tell you when in a few minutes. Mountain News, first at four, continues. Officials with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet recently announced the immediate closing of a Letcher County bridge. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox was in Blackie today talking to community members and first responders about how this is affecting them. The Blackie Bridge has connected community members to a state highway since 1930. Suddenly, it is closed. Road Department officials announced the bridge would close after they found critical damage to steel connections. The bridge is one of few entrances into the community. First responders Sean Gilly and Wallace Bowling say they were shocked when they heard the news. We had no, uh, there was no correspondence from the state. Um, we found out like everybody else, which was a Facebook post. Um, no warning. Yeah, no contingency plans, no planning, no nothing. It was just doing our lap like anybody else in the community. Two alternate routes include Highway 2036 and Highway 160, which first responders say adds at least 25 minutes of drive time to get out of town. Coming up at 6, I will take a closer look at how the bridge closing impacts several parts of the community. In Blackie Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. KYTC officials say they are working on plans to repair the bridge, but there is currently no estimated time when it will be completed. A road collapse is causing major problems out in Wyoming at the start of the summer tourist season. From June through September, roughly 12,000 people use Highway 22 each day to reach destinations like Yellowstone National Park. As you can see, all that remains now is an 80-foot drop that plummets into the valley below. Transportation officials say the mountainside had been shifting for decades at about a quarter inch a year. But when large cracks reappeared immediately after repairs, they knew a collapse was inevitable. Uh, it was moving about six inches an hour. And sometime during the night between Friday night and Saturday morning, it had uh, catastrophic failure. Catastrophic is right. Thankfully, no one was injured. It's unclear when the highway will reopen, and even just surveying the damage could take weeks. While officials look for some short-term relief options, traveling through the mountainous region could take up to three times as long. Temperatures today were in the 70s and 80s. We'll have one more nice day of that, and then the warming trend will take place. Numbers for today made it to 76 in Jackson, 77 Manchester, Jonesville, Middleborough, 79 degrees. Same story in Somerset, Prestonsburg, as well as Pikeville made it to 76. Now we take a look at the departure from normal. 81 is where we should be for this time of year. We're 10 degrees cooler on the high end in Moorhead, 6 degrees cooler in Jackson, 5 degrees cooler in London, 6 degrees cooler in Williamsburg. Outside right now we have a mixture of sun and clouds out there. Temperatures are still uh, in the 70s. You can see right there we're at 77 in Manchester. London's checking in with 74. Irvine 74, 79 in Somerset as well as Jacksboro. Now live pinpoint Doppler radar showing a clean sweep across eastern Kentucky and folks this is going to get a break for at least the next seven days as high pressure will be in control and that is going to come with a warming trend and we'll talk more about that warming trend coming up in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Steve over to you. All right Eric thanks. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is running out of money as the summer storm season begins to ramp up. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration now reports that the U.S. has already been hit with 11 extreme disasters so far this year. Combined, those costs add up to a price tag of more than $25 billion. The agency could have a deficit of more than $1.3 billion in August, according to a report. The FEMA spokesperson says the agency is working with Congress to address the funding issue. FEMA also says it's taking steps to fund a reserve to be set aside for initial response and recovery operations. FEMA is warning survivors of the April 2nd storms here in Kentucky to be cautious. 
of people trying to obtain money or steal personal information. Officials say thieves try to apply for FEMA assistance using names, addresses, and social security numbers they have stolen from survivors. Officials say don't believe anyone who promises a disaster grant in return for payment and don't give your banking information to a person claiming to be a FEMA housing inspector. If you did not apply for FEMA assistance but received a letter from FEMA, you are asked to call the FEMA helpline at 800-621-3362. If you are a victim of a scam, report it immediately to your local police or sheriff's department or contact the Office of Attorney General. Coming up on First at Four, what some states are doing to prevent rising property taxes with home insurance rates also on the rise. And a beautiful evening is in store. We'll see temperatures in the 50s and 60s, but there is a warming trend in the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Visit